Hi, this is Jimmy from Deprective Engineer. Today we're going to be covering how to use filters to sort your tasks in Todoist. Todoist is great um, for many reasons. One of the main reasons I like it is because it's an easy way that you can slice and dice your tasks in terms of how you view them via filters. The conditional nature and the natural language understanding of Todoist really lend itself to quickly and easily creating filters that really suit your needs. And that's what this video is gonna cover. Now, if you're new to Todoist, you really should check out my beginner's guide to Todoist video, which I'm gonna to link to up above. Uh, this covers everything in Todoist from soup to nuts. It will, you, it assumes that you know nothing about Todoist. And by the end of it, you'll be able to functionally use Todoist to manage your day-to-day -day, day -day tasks. Now, before we get started with the video, if you like this video, please click the like button as it really helps out my channel. If you are interested in seeing more productivity videos or just like the content, you should subscribe because this channel is all about productivity apps. And lastly, if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks. Let's get started. So as you can see here, I have a project. If you hear the left hand uh, panel, I have a project called Office Space with two sub projects. The project Office Space itself has uh, five tasks here. And then and there's also five for red stapler and then three for jump to conclusions. And I'm going to show you how to create filters to sort of parse down the data and come up with uh, ways to view your data tasks that you want to see at a given time. So the way you create a filter is you scroll down here and you come to filters and you click the plus button. And let's call this filter top priority. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a filter that is looking for uh, anything that's marked as a P1, which is priority one. And we're going to click add. And when we do that, you can see that my three projects here, and you, the way you can tell it's a priority one is it's red. And I'm going to show you what that means. So you come in here and you have four different priority levels. Red is priority one, orange is priority two, blue three, and then like an empty flag or a black flag is four. Um, so, as you can see, all of these also are indicated in the red circle. So all three of these are priority ones. And that's how you create a priority one, you know, a top priority um, filter. And obviously this is like the one of the more common ones that you'll always want to use, the ones that are marked high priority. You just want to see those items first. Uh, and this will work across all your projects. As you can see here, Red Stapler, Red Stapler, and the Jump to Conclusions project all had prep items that were marked priority one. Now, let's say we want to create a filter that had priority one or priority two. Well, what we could do is come into filters. We could do P1 or P2 as the filter name. And then all we would do is do P1, the bar, which indicates is the or operator. <laughs> so it's going to say if it's P1 or P2 uh, show, you know, and you can, when you can come here, you can Let's give this a mint green filter and we'll click add. And now, as you can see, with this priority one, priority two filter, uh, I get all the things that were marked priority one, which is red. And you also get the orange one here um, for the, you know, brag about your red stapler. Uh, so this captures every day as P1 or, or P2. Okay, so let's step up our priority one or priority two filter game a little bit by narrowing down to a specific project. So let's say I wanted to create a filter for a particular project that had priority one or priority two, not just all my projects. So what I could do, as you can see here, this P1, P2, actually right now I have four things that fit this category of being a priority one or a priority two. Uh, but let's say I wanted to define all the ones that are just in project jump to conclusions. So obviously I know there's only going to be one, but let's create a filter um, that I can do that. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to call it jump and P1 or P2. And the first thing I want to do is put in a hashtag that indicates a project. Project uh, jump to conclusions. Learn a spell. And 
And then what I do is I use a parenthesis, P1, the pipe, P2, close parenthesis. So what this is saying is anything that is project jump to conclusions and P1 or P2. And as you can see, when I click that in, it shows just the one I was I had, which is this is the only item in project jump to conclusions that has a P1 or P2 on it. So the key thing that you were learning here is that we can now combine using operators like and or or to create complex queries that we can leverage as filters. So in this case, I created a filter that's looking at everything that's in project jump to conclusion and and then I create a parenthesis to do another evaluation of P1 or P2. So I look for everything that's in this project that's either P1 or P2 and I display that. And we just covered how to search a particular project, but what if you have a project that has sub projects? If you just use the single hashtag and then reference the project, it's only going to search that project. For example, if I just had a single hashtag, a filter that had a single hashtag project office space, it would only search these tasks here. It would not search these two sub projects, red stapler and jump to conclusions unless, you know, by default. So what, I, what you do there is you actually use the double hashtag and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to go to filters right here, hit plus, and I'm going to call this office space, subs and subs and email. And the way I'm going to do that, you say, well, how do I, and what I do is I have a label um, that I put on tasks that require me to, that are email based. So if I have a correspondence that I'm doing to somebody, you know, I have to send somebody something an email. I have a tag for that. So I can actually, the nice thing about having that tag is that if I'm sitting down from my, my email and I'm processing email, I can search for everything that's email and just bang it out. So the way I do that is hashtag, hashtag, two hashtags there, project office space. And the at symbol, that indicates label, email. I'll give that a nice uh, lavender color. I hit add. And now you can see, I've done that. You can see that Red Staple, Jump to Conclusions, and the main office space uh, project all have items that have email in them, uh, email tags here, or labels. So that's a quick way. Now, I'm going to show you what would happen if I had just left a single hashtag in there. Uh, so I'm going to edit my filter. I'm going to change it by deleting one of these hashtags and I'm going to hit save. And when I do that, that, as I said earlier, it only searches the office space project, not the sub projects. So we'll just go back in and quickly fix that by clicking the ellipses, go to edit filter, and we'll go back in. We'll insert our additional hashtag hit save, and then everything's back to normal, working the way we want it to. Which is, so when you see the double hashtag, that's telling you it's going to search that project and any sub-projects that exist under that project. If you see a single hashtag, it's only searching that project. Okay, now let's talk about dates and times. And obviously, a lot of our tasks are going to be date-bound or time-bound or both. And we want to create filters that only show us the things within a certain time range. So for example, let's say I wanted to create a filter that, fil that shows me only items that are due tomorrow before noon. So the way I would do that is I would go down to filters, hit the plus button, create a filter name called tomorrow before noon is my filter name. And I'll come over here and say tomorrow and do before colon space 12 p.m. And when I hit add, you can see that it shows me the one item that I have due tomorrow that's before noon, in which case 11 a.m. here. If I go back to, uh, if I were to, to show you how this works, if I come back in and edit this filter, and let's say I just left it for tomorrow, hit save you can see i had actually had two items that are due tomorrow one at 11 a.m and one at 6 p.m so when i with my filter i was it was correctly screening out the 6 p.m one because it was afternoon so if i go back in edit my filter 
come back in and just put it back in here. And, and because I've already done it, it actually shows it here. I can actually click do before and the call in 12 p.m. Hit save. And now it just shows me, goes back to just showing me that task. So I'm going to go back to my project, double click here. So I can see all my project tasks. Let's, but another filter you could do is one, let's say you want to see everything that doesn't have a due date. So you could go to filter. You can say no due dates. And you can just type in no due date. Hit OK. And it's showing me all this stuff that doesn't have a due date assigned to it. So sometimes you want to know, you may have what's called like a limbo uh, filter, right? Like things that don't have a due date. They can be done whenever, like a, a junk drawer of uh, tasks that you have that don't have a specific time and date but are things that you potentially want to do. And maybe when you finish your list of things that have dates, you might want to say, okay, well, what's on that list? And then you check that list. Another filter you could create, I'll go back here, is task as a filter that shows tasks that don't have any labels or any tags to them. And the way you can do that is, again, go down to filters, hit the plus button, type in no labels. Oops. And, this, and you literally just type no labels. And it will show you every task in your to-do list um, account that has no label. You can also get a little more complicated. So if I go back, if I come back up here, double click on my project so I can see my project, I can create a to-do filter. Let's say I want to see everything that's coming up that's P1 in the next two weeks. So I can sit there and say P1 next two weeks. And I can create a filter that says P1 and I can literally type next 14 days, hit add. And as you can see, I can see everything that's a P1 that's coming up within the next 14 days. So as you can see, you to know this is really powerful in terms of how you can filter. And this is just a microcosm of some of the things you can do. You can get more and more complex by stacking conditionals together to really narrow down your data. But Hopefully what I've shown you here today is some of the building blocks that you can use in your own Todoist implementation to really narrow down to the things that you want to see at that given moment, whether it's based on time, priority, tag or label, project or projects. You can really hone in and get explicit on what you want to see. And once you start using Todoist regularly and you start getting more and more tasks, filtering will become more and more important and more powerful for you. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you liked this video, please click the like button as it really does help my channel. If you like this, this video and want to see more um, tutorials on things like Todoist, Notion, Evernote, the Google Docs Suite, or any other app, you should subscribe to my channel because that's literally all this channel does is provide tutorials helping you to become more productive in these productivity apps. And lastly, if you want to be notified when I release a video, please click the bell. Thanks.